dart or a wow well, an, uh, antichrist or nymphomania yeah. hits you yeah because mm-hmm. there's a com- like this isn't dark comedy it's like uber dark comedy like yeah. black comedy i guess is what you call it uh, yeah but that scene i should have been offended by it but i just thought i'm not going to be offended by von trier doing this to get a rise out of me does that i'm stubborn yeah. I don't know what you think yeah, about that. I mean, no, no, I, I, I think I know what you're getting at. It's almost like uh, <laughs> I, I'm onto your game, Von Trier. And yeah, I'm not gonna, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to play by – you're not playing by the rules, so I'm not going to play by your rules. So, ha, the yeah. joke's on you kind of thing. Very cute, yeah. Lars. Yeah, it's, it, it, and that's kind of, I feel, his his M.O. I mean, I think I think the, tr- the trickiness with him is that he brings all of this – I think he brings all this, like, philosophy. He brings this rich – intellectual perspective to his work like you know i i wasn't the biggest fan of nymphomaniac but it runs through that as well and and i'm like so i see where he's getting at but it is again it's kind of like the the obnoxious kid who makes fart sounds in the back of the room but he's also really smart at the same time so it's like how do you (laughs) yeah exactly how how do you appraise that and that's that's something he really likes to he he likes to screw with his audience for sure i have a question so all right so s craig zoller films right you know their dialogue head now you and i we're, we're knowledgeable on film like we we're in a film bubble you and i i think we're in the you know top what two percent of people or i don't know whatever hundred like two percent who knows about movies probably <laughs> right like we're like we so when we watch a von trier film if if you and i were at con together we're in we're in uh tuxedos and we know his tricks mm-hmm. we're not going to react the way that people walking out react mm-hmm. so do these people who walked out not know what a von trier film is because the imagery in this is not as bad as some of his other films so are these people who wanted to be offended are these people who not know his filmography like who who gets offended by this movie that's a tough question but you got to answer it because you're a smart man. Well, well, here's the thing, Mark, and it really goes back to like what I was my my first initial what I was saying about the uh, structure of the film and how it's different than something like Antichrist or even Melancholia, even though Melancholia is not a quote unquote shock movie, I would say. But with this one, it, it's so detached from a conventional narrative that I'm like, and I've seen a lot of movies, a lot of horror movies that go much further in terms of like content, you know. What yeah, you much see. further, much yeah, further. What, yeah, I mean, I mean, Cannibal Holocaust, please, that goes way further than anything in the house that Jack built. Bone Tomahawk. Um, oh yeah, I mean, shh, please, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I would say Bone Tomahawk's more more startling and more this not, almost more visceral, I would say as well. More, oh, more by far, because you don't not only. Do you not see it coming but it's also more visceral <laughs> oh my god yeah yeah well it's like you don't know what's happening to that guy who's getting his clothes stripped off of him and then it's like oh god yeah that's almost that's like a look away moment right there yeah, yeah uh, I, 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 I i felt that when i watched that movie with house that jack built i didn't feel any of that any, yeah. any no visceral reaction really to anything uh, i gotta ask you a question what movies have burned images in your mind oh god Oh, man. So uh, I think Antichrist has. Uh, there's a couple. So the scene where uh, Willem Dafoe shoots blood out of something. Uh, where she where she does the, uh, uh, where she clips between her legs. Yeah. Oh, but... like that movie, that's burnt. I think Bone Tomahawk has been burnt. Henry has burnt things into me. I, I'll, I'll go with uh, the about last 10 minutes of Sallow. I don't know if you've seen that one. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, if you might not want to. I mean, Cannibal Holocaust, that's forever, for better and worse, that's stuck in my I had forever um is there what, what's the image from this that could be even though he said it, it hasn't been burnt what's like i think the moment that he wanted to troll the most was an incident three and that moment mm-hmm. affected me the least actually because okay. i felt the most obvious trolling in that moment and i didn't like it with the red hats and <sighs> with the symbolism it was too obvious for me and it was too easy so i didn't i wrote that off immediately well what 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 are your thoughts on the uh, red hats as red shirts or red hats as something uh, more indicative of something else because i was almost thinking of uh, yeah i mean uh, uh, hats without a certain 
piece of writing on it for today's yeah, no yeah like it's either a maga hat or or yeah. you know he was showing a lot of a lot of hunting by europeans who are the red coat so either oh, it yeah, was yeah. you know he was talking about the fox hunts remember they showed the footage of the fox yes. hunts and there was hundreds of them which mm -hmm. makes me sick so it's either the red coats right or mm -hmm. it's it's maga it's whatever you want but he made that choice on purpose to and he left it he left it there's not an answer so for me i didn't like that I, I don't always i love ambiguity but i just thought with that moment he was he was really trolling and i, I don't know why man that it felt too easy to me that scene mm -hmm. there's no cruelty to it because you went from the bratty kids to him killing them yeah and it's and it's like another one of those moments in the movie where it's like just this jarring cut where it's like they're talking or something and then it's all of a sudden the wife the the mother figure is huddled with the kids behind something because he's taken over the watchtower with yeah. the gun basically so so i i don't agree with that i uh well i'll admit that that uh sequence had not as much effect on me because uh, i don't have kids and uh, I would I would have been more upset if it went a cannibal holocaust route and it were like cats or something like that or like you were talking about the foxes. I would have gone full Liam Neeson from Taken if that happened not cats. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> if it, if it were like some sort of open air cat sanctuary, I would have been like, okay, Von Trier really. I would have walked out. I would have been like, screw you, Von Trier. I'm walking out of con. It's crazy that the most sh I, we've already covered this, but the craziest thing for me was watching the duck's leg get cut off, and that never yeah. happened. Other than all the humans is that weird yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think I, I think there's a primal thing where it's like uh, he, maybe we become a bit desensitized to seeing people get killed f fakely on you know on the screen and therefore when especially when it's like a small animal it's it's like you know it's just, just any animal but when it's like a little duckling that's it's just ah quick it, it, was, it was it was yeah oh quick question this is totally off the spot but how many of those pizzas would you have eaten seriously man <laughs> i i would have made an attempt to get through those pizzas <laughs> That's it's free pizza, man. How can you just like I that, it, near the end when he's like frustrated and he's like you know just, just like shoving him off the shelf and he's just like oh he's all pissed off. I'm like come on, man, you're wasting perfectly good bachelor food here. Come <laughs> on, I mean, and he's a jeez, he's a bachelor. Jeez. Now, how many of those those he he pulled? He had nine cards with nine uh, words on them about what serial killers are. How many do you remember? Oh boy. Oh God! Oh, what do you think? Do you want me to read them to you? Uh, yeah, please. It's it's yeah, please. All right. Uh, egotism, vulgarity, mm -hmm. rudeness, impulsive impulsiveness, narcissist, intelligence, manipulative, mood swings, and verbal superiority. Do you think he had? <laughs> okay. Do you think he had verbal superiority? Because nothing that he verbally said was superior to people. He just found people that he could talk to like that. Is that who? these people hunt because well it's yeah i mean that's that's a good point it speaks to that egotism you know it's like well if if you like a narcissist if you if you align yourself with people who you view as a couple rungs down from you you can kind of what's the word i'm thinking of calm simple yeah <laughs> call them simple call them simple but you can kind of like build this little nest of people who are kind of psychophants it's like oh it's like well they'll look up to me because they think i'm smart even though i might not be as smart as the smartest person or even oh you know what i mean yeah. I think that's what you were saying you know that's interesting i like that so you, you find people that you can have superiority over mm -hmm. you're a smart guy johnny <laughs> i've i've known some people in real life who've had to deal with uh narcissistic personalities uh, so i kind of have, have a little inside track on some of that stuff so. I, I worked with a narcissist once and I refused to like give way to my boss and it got ugly oh, yeah. quick. <laughs> oh, yeah, because, because yeah. I went, no, <laughs> it wasn't good for me professionally, but whatever. So uh, I, I just want to talk about one more thing that we haven't gotten to is when he becomes Mr. Sophistication. And <laughs> so there's a scene where he's very OCD and there's an entire scene where he keeps going back into a house. It almost gets him caught. He tells a cop like it, it, the whole thing. But another kill he has is he, he straight strangles a woman and then mm -hmm. he doesn't like the pictures he takes of her so he goes back to her house and along the way he i, I shouldn't laugh he runs over an old woman and so <laughs> he parks his red van covered in blood and he carries a very uh, a hemorrhaging body and a frozen body all the way through an apartment complex no one notices yep and he takes photographs with them and i 
love that he says that I was initially hesitant about the old lady, but they added a great touch of humor with the photographs. Yeah. And I love that he sent the pictures to a newspaper, a local paper that was known for, hey, a gate was stolen. So he wanted to help <laughs> this local newspaper with this crazy story. They broke the story. He killed, what, 68 people, correct? Yeah, yeah so something like that. Yeah. And he made a house out of them. We haven't even talked about the house that he made with them. I, I, I mean, all this talk and we haven't gotten to the titular house, no. Did he make the house? Do you think he built that house? You know, I could conceive of him actually building that house because he goes through that uh, when he's turning grumpy into smiley, he's talking about the methods through which you can use like, uh, I don't know what, wire and certain tools to like manipulate the bodies when they're in a certain state of decomposition. Yeah. Um, so, so I believe like with his experience and he's ostensibly an architect, um, if, if we're to believe what we see of the house that he just continuously tries to build and just bulldozes over because he can't. Yeah, I love that. Because he can't. So actually, the biggest laugh I had when I watched it in the theater was when the bulldozer comes and just bulldozes the house down. He's like, I wasn't satisfied with it. And it's like, yeah. How much money did he get left? Like, he got left enough money to live off of for 12 years. Oh, yeah, apparently. Now, and to, oh, and to go, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, now, I, uh, before we we're, we're going to head out here pretty soon, but do you, th how do you think he died? And do you think he died? Do you think he unlocked a part of his conscience in that room? Do you think he died? Do you think that cop shot him? What do you think? <sighs> you're le oh, I trust you. I'm not even going to mention this. I, you're sum you're summing this up, Johnny. Num. This is a really good question because watching it a second time, I was like, wait a second. So there's a weird Mobius or Ouroboros thing going on with this movie because we've been listening to him and Verge talk and philosophize. And then we get to a point, that point where he finally gets entry into that other room, which he's been trying to get into for all these years. And then it's and then it's like it's it, it sort of loops backward to like, OK, we see where he was with Verge as he was recounting these things so i would almost think that's as good an explanation as any maybe the house is not a that house is not a house after all maybe that hole in the middle of the room arbitrarily is just him going down into him dying and him going down into whatever section of hell he's being guided to or toward by by verge i wasn't really i was thinking more literally um, yeah. With with this movie, but it's again you go back to how untrustworthy this char th this character is. So it's like I, I, it it probably is a bunch of crap that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is act this is actually really happening on a realistic plane here. That it's yeah. Th th there must be yeah. I, I think something <laughs> metaphysical occurs once he gets into that room finally because it seems too coincidental that he'd be you know backed into a corner like that got it well thank you so much man and if you want to read more about this movie head to crash palace productions and you can read the review for the house that jack built written by johnny numb uh, any plugs you want to do before we get out of here uh not really <laughs> awesome just 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 thanks for having me on again mark it was a pleasure talking about this dude you're great i like i haven't i i put a lot of thought into this podcast and like i i think we were talking earlier during the break we haven't talked about a, a 190th of our notes but i think we left it in a perfect place yeah i think there's enough here for just like hey if people are interested and it's like uh we we didn't really spoil <laughs> I don't know that we really spoiled anything either, so... No, you're right. Dude, this is awesome, man. So, hey, thank you for joining me. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, right. Mark. So, for Mark Hoffmeyer and for Johnny Mad Dog Dumb, this is Movies, Some of the Flicks. We'll see you next week.